Thank you. Thank you, um, Professor Nunes, for uh, inviting me to what I hope will be um, uh, the first uh, of many such uh, events uh, taking place uh, here in this uh, auditorium uh, right next to the Likio um, of Aristoteles uh, at a time when uh, I do think that these types of discussions are more uh, relevant uh, than ever. And let me start by saying that I'm, I'm really privileged uh, today to be uh, attending what I hope will be a, a fascinating discussion uh, between two uh, exceptional um, scholars, uh, uh, John Tasulas from uh, Oxford University and uh, Josh Ober from Stanford University. Uh, I happen to know Josh for many years. As for those of you who don't know that, uh, he holds the Konstantin Mitsotakis chair at uh, Stanford uh, University. Uh, he's a scholar who has uh, studied uh, the Athenian democracy in great detail, has written eloquently about uh, its relevance today in those times of uh, democratic challenge. And I find it uh, absolutely fascinating that he is uh, embracing with uh, great enthusiasm the challenge of uh, connecting uh, the disruption of artificial uh, intelligence to the classical wisdom that emanated out of this uh, uh, great uh, uh, city um, 2,500 uh, uh, years uh, ago. And of course, my um, uh, congratulations to Democritus and the World Human Forum for organizing what I think is going to be a very, very interesting discussion. I thought that as introductory remarks, I'd share with you some quick thoughts about the sort of answers that I would expect to get from this discussion uh, as, uh, as a policy um, uh, maker. And let me make three um, quick uh, uh, observations. Um, uh, pointing out that, I shouldn't forget that, that I was also at Stanford 31 years ago uh, at a time when the World Wide Web was making its, uh, its first steps. We barely had uh, uh, mobile phones uh, uh, and, of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, artificial uh, intelligence was still something that science fiction writers were writing about. Uh, so the first topic is very deep, profound, philosophical, the relationship between uh, humans uh, and, uh, and machines. I remember uh, when uh, I was uh, uh, studying at Harvard doing my, um, uh, my business degree right after leaving Stanford. Yes, I did make that mistake. I did not stay at the West Coast, but uh, we're all humans. We all make, uh, we all make mistakes. Uh, I remember that at the time, uh, we're reading a book called uh, uh, In the Age of the Smart Machine. And these were the days when the internet um, uh, was making its, uh, its first steps. And of course, this discussion, um, uh, the relationship between humans and technology uh, is an old discussion. But the question that we have to answer now is whether there is something profoundly different about this uh, revolution, the revolution of artificial intelligence compared to previous technological revolutions. And I happen to believe that uh, uh, there is something that is different because uh, for the first time um, we have uh, uh, tools that can uh, essentially simulate more and more of the actual manifestations of human intelligence. Uh, this is something that has never happened before. Uh, and um, we can now, when we talk to the thinkers uh, you know, around artificial intelligence, we can envision uh, a form of machine learning uh, that spans the entire spectrum of, of human uh, cognitive abilities. We're not just talking about doing tasks better than humans do in terms of helping us professionally, but writing better music, uh, painting, um, uh, discussing, uh, engaging in philosophical debates, this was the prerogative of the human species. This is what made us different um, uh, from, uh, uh, from the world uh, uh, around us. And this is, this is changing now. Uh, and uh, this is creating uh, a completely new reality, which forces us to recalibrate 
our relationship to technology, uh, which has acquired human characteristics when we talk about, when we talk about intelligence uh, itself. And of course, uh, this raises you know, profound you know, questions about the role that humans will have in work or in, in leisure, tremendous implications when it comes to the nature of the, of the workforce uh, and the jobs that will be replaced by uh, artificial intelligence. These are all uh, momentous uh, challenges that we really need to think uh, deeply about. The second, po the second point which uh, I want to raise has to do with uh, the sort of the, the brains behind uh, this development. And who develops this technology and for what purpose? Is this just uh, the prerogative of scientific research? Is this something that is developed in universities for the benefit uh, of, uh, of humankind and of research in general? Probably no. This is now uh, a market-driven process. These technologies are driven by a few very large companies with practically unlimited resources that can afford to hire any bright brain out of any uh, uh, university. Uh, and um, uh, they're doing this because they are profit-oriented enterprises. So we need to think hard about the motive behind these uh, developments, which affect the lives of all of us. Uh, and of course, we also need to understand, it's my, you know, I'm not an engineer, uh, but I think I've, I've really tried to read a lot about uh, uh, artificial intelligence, and we have the privilege in Greece of having an, an exceptional high-level committee advising me on artificial uh, intelligence, so I'd better educate myself in order to understand what these people are actually uh, um, telling me. But it seems to me that there are very, very few people in the world who really understand how these large language models actually work. And this, I would suggest, should be a reason of concern. At the same time, when the developments are moving so quickly, um, uh, when I'm not even sure that the scientists who develop them fully understand the implications of how these algorithms actually work. Um, uh, so without believing in a sort of, a, I don't know, terminate a future where machines are going to take over uh, the world and eliminate uh, all of us, this should give us uh, a sort of reason to be concerned. And if the um, the rationale is profit, then speed is of essence. The faster we move, the better it will be. Um, um, uh, uh, and you look at the, the valuations that the markets assign to these uh, companies, there's a reason to be quick. But does this give us really time to pause and think about what it is um, we, are, we are doing? And this is the probably more benign version of the world, because there's another version of the world uh, in a more, uh, I would say, um, uh, uh, state-controlled, a more statist approach towards artificial intelligence, where you can see artificial intelligence as a weapon uh, against your geopolitical opponents. And there, again, you have no reason to stop and pause, because you want to gain some sort of comparative advantage in this new sort of Cold War, um, uh, which is defined by, by technology. Uh, so where does this uh, you know, leave us, especially us in Europe, um, we, we try to take a more values-based approach towards smart um, regulation of, uh, of artificial intelligence. And my, my third observation, which is, brings us to the debate that, uh, uh, we will, um, that you will have today, is, uh, uh, relates to the philosophical heritage um, and how does it help us to make uh, sense of the complicated world, but also of the complicated choices that we um, uh, have, to, have to make? Uh, I'm not uh, uh, a deep scholar of Aristotle, but I've read lots of his works. And I do think that uh, as a thinker who sort of examines the relationship between uh, human nature, ethics, and the political community, yes, there is a lot that maybe he can teach us in providing 
a conceptual and philosophical framework um, uh, to, um, uh, to think about these, uh, these deep uh, problems. Uh, what would Aristotle think of a, uh, of, of a life where we would no longer need to work because our work would be done by a machine? Would this be a good life? Would this be a flourishing um, life? We probably know um, uh, uh, the, uh, the answer. As a thinker who was passionate about um, uh, the, the ability and the responsibility to lead a fulfilling uh, life, uh, these choices that we make about how we use uh, technology, uh, I think, uh, are, uh, will find a lot of, um, I think we will find a lot of stimuli uh, in, in, his, uh, in his thinking. Now, this idea, I personally agree with those who, who, who think of you know, technology, including artificial intelligence, as an, as an intelligent tool. A tool, um, not, not a colleague, uh, not a friend, not a citizen. A citizen, huh? because where does this lead us? At some point, uh, will robots have uh, the right to vote? If we recognize them as, 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 fully, uh, as fully independent, it may seem absurd now, but if we don't draw the proper boundaries um, today, these are questions that may actually uh, come back, uh, come back to, to haunt us. Uh, and this uh, uh, dystopian uh, uh, image of a future uh, uh, in uh, um, the, you know, the latest Isiguro model, you know, you know, Clara and the Sun, where you have uh, a robot, essentially, an AI robot, as a friend uh, and as a, 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 as a companion is not that far from, from reality um, today. And of course, my last point, a critical question, which I'm sure you may want to comment on, uh, implication for, um, uh, uh, for human rights. Um, do we have a right as individuals to know if a decision that affects our lives has been taken by a machine. If for the young kids here in the audience, if your resumes are screened by an AI uh, algorithm, do you have a right to know that? And if yes, what are the implications uh, of, this, uh, uh, of this right? I'm not saying that it's a good or a bad practice, I'm just raising uh, the issue which is happening today and what are the, uh, the, uh, the implications uh, as we open up this sphere of, uh, of, uh, uh, of, of possibilities. Um, what are the implications for relationships of trust, which are so important in human communities? We can trust individuals. We trust each other because we develop networks of relationships. Can we trust machines? And what does trust mean when you interact with, uh, uh, with a machine? But there is no flourishing community, starting from ancient Athens and the city-states to the modern successful liberal democracies that does not flourish on the concept of trust. Uh, and, but trust presupposes uh, networks of connection, which I'm not sure we can necessarily establish with, with machines. And my, my last issue uh, of, uh, of, of concern, which is more related to maybe biology uh, and, and, and medicine than it is to um, uh, ethics and, and philosophy, has to do with uh, cognitive development. When I was at Stanford um, 31 years ago, I took a friend of mine and we crossed the US by car. There was no Google Maps at the time. I used regular maps. But our brain has developed over millions of years and spatial understanding and orientation is an important component um, of, uh, uh, of cognitive development. What if we replace all these processes uh, by machines that make our life easier. What will it mean at the end of the day um, uh, in terms of how our brain has been programmed by evolution over millions of years? Are we overriding um, uh, the, the way we have developed biologically by simply starving our brain of uh, certain important cognitive uh, uh, functions which are absolutely um, um, uh, critical? You know, we know what it means to write a nice essay and how important it is to compose text. But the truth is that the large language models are doing this 
uh, probably as well as we do and even, or, or, or even better. And the temptation, the temptation to stop writing um, um, and just use uh, a, a, an algorithm is there. I mean, we shouldn't kid ourselves. This is, this is happening. It's happening not just in the educational system. But what, what are the long-term implications of these questions? So I think I should probably um, uh, stop here by concluding that I think Greece and this place has a role to play in these discussions um, uh, in terms of uh, uh, connecting. Uh, 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 this is a, a term uh, that my, my sister Alexandra has coined, uh, uh, ancestral intelligence and artificial intelligence. Is there a natural connection between the two? I think, that, I think there is. That's why I think these dialogues are of great value. I would love to see this event become uh, a, a, an annual global gathering of interdisciplinary thinkers um, that think hard about uh, these, uh, uh, th these questions. I hope we're going to make a good beginning um, here um, uh, today. And certainly, uh, this will have the full support of myself, of the, um, uh, the, the AI committee that we've uh, put together. And I am sure that uh, the discussion that will follow uh, is going to be um, very, very fascinating. So thank you again very much for being here today.